If you feel like you're not being as impactful as you want to be in your games, you're not getting set up for fights well, or maybe the enemy is just doing way more than you, then a misunderstanding of tempo may be your issue. In this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about tempo and give you some clear examples to help you understand the concept and implement it into your own games. Tempo has become a bit of a buzzword, but it's an incredibly important concept to understand in League. There are a few different ways in which people talk about tempo. So for example, some people use it to just say how generally ahead of the curve they are in a game. So if you have high gold income from CS or kills, or you're stronger than you normally would be at a certain point, then they would say that you're on good tempo. But I think the most important form of tempo is relating to your base timings and advantage over the enemy in terms of how your strength relates to theirs. Now, this is a pretty broad definition, so let's start with a very simple example. When you take a base, that is the strongest you're going to be until you reset again. We know this because your strength is going to be the highest when your HP and mana is full and your gold is spent. This is exactly what a base will get you. As you leave the base and use mana, take trades, lose HP, and gain gold, all of these resources diminish. Without HP, mana, or gold spent, we're not going to be very strong. So this is the basis of tempo. We say that we are high tempo when we just come off of a base because that's the strongest we're going to be. And we are constantly going down tempo until we take a base again and spike back up. If we want to think of tempo in terms of like a graph where time would be on the x-axis and tempo is on the right, we're very high tempo and as soon as we are on the map for a long time, we'll slowly go down and then as soon as we get that base, we're going to tick back up and it's just going to repeat over and over again. So every time we get that base in, we're maximally strong and every time that we stay on the map, we're going to be decreasing in that tempo. Now, a way you can remember this is that tempo is basically the time you have that you're stronger than the opponent and that gives you an opportunity to do something. So if you shove away before them, get the base before them, and they're one way behind, you may have 10 to 15 seconds of tempo on top of them. That means that you're much stronger than them, and you are given the time to actually make a play. Now, there can be individual tempo, team tempo, and nuance on how important that tempo is in each moment. So it'll all be very scenario dependent on how you use your understanding of tempo to make the right decision. So let's get into a few examples that really showcases the importance of understanding this concept. All right, so let's get into our first example that I think will really illustrate the point of how important understanding tempo is. So this is a clip that I took from one of my coaching sessions. In this situation, we were playing Huey up against a Azir. Um, at this point in the game, we're four minutes and 30 seconds in, and we haven't based yet, so we're sitting on a lot of gold, and we don't have a lot of mana to play with. Maybe we have some WE to regenerate some mana or even some biscuits, but overall, we're not going to be doing able to do too much if a play happens we're probably going to get one combo rotation off and that's about it and there's no way we're going to be killing the azir or poking him out of lane because we just don't have the mana to play with so in this situation we know that grubs is going to be coming up at that five minute mark so this would be an actual great time to reset both of our support and our jungler are off map so we don't have anything to attend to so let's reset our timer with them be on the same tempo as them and that means we're going to be able to put ourselves in a great situation to be able to fight these grubs as soon as uh we get back on the map so Let's see what happens. We end up QWing or QEing the wave, killing all these casters here. Fantastic. Let's take our base. But instead, you see what happens is we actually stay on the map. We throw a Q out, and now we're really no mana. Even though we know we're not going to be able to kill this Azir, we're still staying on the map. So, okay, maybe, maybe we can make this work, but we need to shove now because we are at actually zero mana. So, yeah, maybe we can use a biscuit once again. But theoretically, we're not going to be able to do basically anything if any fight happens. So if you go and hard shove this wave right now and reset, then sure, you're a little late, but it still works. You're able to fight the grubs, especially with your support and jungle coming off of the map and pinging on the way to grubs. It should be a clear sign that you need to get up tempo so you're able to actually fight with them. But instead, what happens? Pike kind of comes through. Nothing really crazy happens. The Azir gets his way out. And yeah, the Azir is now zero mana, but you're not really any more useful than him in a fight because your Hui kind of just throwing out maybe a Q and an E. So instead of taking that reset, we are down tempo here. And you see we walk into the grubs to try and help our team. Top lane is getting shoved in. So top lane is going to have a first room here. And Maokai actually comes up from the bot lane. And uh, since we're not really able to do too much on our own because of the mana situation, we kind of just get zoned out of the fight and we let our team take this on the own on their own and you see the only reason this is actually working out we can imagine a different situation where instead of azir staying for this wave after he would have gotten reset and that means his tempo would have been reset and he can tv back in and he's going to be way stronger than you and then the fight's really bad when you would have had the tempo advantage had you just taken the base earlier on so we kind of tussle with this uh with this play here you know, we try to go back, but by the time we even end up moving, the play is already done and it could have gone either way. 
So people would look at this play and be like, wow, yeah, look, my team won. I got a kill. Fantastic. Things look good. I don't think I made any mistakes. But we can imagine a, di a different scenario where people love to complain about their team. You're letting your team take a 3v3 that you have no impact in. So do you want to take a 3v3 coin flip and pray that your team wins? Or do you want to guarantee that the play is won by taking a 4v3 where you're up tempo and strong and have all of your gold spent and your full mana? I think that second option is much better and more guaranteed. And this is why people feel like they have no impact in games is because they put themselves in scenarios like this and then their team loses the game and they wonder why their team's taking bad plays is because you didn't set yourself up to be able to be high tempo on timer with your team so you can take the fight advantageously. So going back to the beginning of this play, what could have given us the signs that we needed to reset and get our tempo back up? Well, first of all, the fact that we're no mana means that we're not going to do much in the lane until we get that reset. We haven't reset and don't have the TP. We know the grubs is going to be coming up at five minutes and both of our support and our jungler are going to be going for this reset here. So this is all great signs to say, OK, I can get on the same timer, the same tempo as my team by taking the reset. I can replenish the resource and make sure I'm in a winning position for my lane for the fight that's going to be coming. So with that knowledge, we would shove this wave instantly and then get our base. And that makes it perfect. We're in sync with our team. And this actually means that Azir is going to be one step behind because if you would have shoved this wave first, TP'd back, you're actually first to hit this wave and that means you're first to move. And this is the advantage that Tempo really gets you. So getting into this next example here, I want to showcase the importance of having good Tempo when it comes to these mid-game neutral objectives. So things like the Dragon and the Baron. These objectives can be dictated by who has the setup first and who has the control of the vision and the chokes. Now because this is so important, we need to make sure that we are in good Tempo to set up before the enemy and give us that advantage. So in this game, I'm playing Talia and I'm not doing too hot. I'm two and six and this Kiana has kind of been rolling. So it's very, very difficult to deal with. But this objective is coming up in one minute and my team makes a fantastic play on the Kiana, which means that she dies. So knowing this, I know the Kiana is down tempo and I have the opportunity to try and get some setup here. So I instantly TP into mid and I use this to clear the wave. And while this is happening, I want to get into the dragon. So I'm pinging danger to show that maybe they're walking in here. So let's be a little bit careful. And Lee Sin is going reset. So keeping this in mind, I'm waiting for my team to get in a good position to help me out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of take in this mid wave. All fine. And at this point, we see three people topside. This means the dragon control is completely ours. So as we do this, Karma walks in. She's doing a great job getting vision first, which I think is awesome. So I'm going to follow her up. And this is exactly what Talia and a lot of control mages thrive on is playing in this fog of war and trying to find picks. So what I do is I use that tempo to kind of ping my team and say, I want to all in and try to find a pick here. Unfortunately, maybe my team is on a great uh, timer because Yasuo needed a reset for an item that he was wanting and Lee Sin took a base a little bit late. But I understand why this happened. I think that it's still OK for me to set up because we saw three topside and this is why I'm going for this play. And of course, I have that great setup. Rengar just walks completely into me. And even though I'm two and six, I actually find the pick that is going to guarantee us this dragon at the very least, and it ends up getting us two. So this is how important understanding tempo is. Kiana got killed on that bot side, and that was a huge mistake by her because that means that she's late for this objective. And I use that tempo to get in first and I catch them off guard. Now, while this is primarily from a mid laner's point of view, I want you to think that this can be applied to anyone. Karma did a great job because she got a perfect reset in or she was dead or whatever. She instantly came off the map and then set up with me on the vision because she knew that she wasn't under threat because of the people we saw topside. The same thing goes for ADC. You're going to be basically doing the same thing as a mid laner, making sure that you get into mid and can help your team or whatever. And jungle, of course, is kind of the same thing as support. But you should definitely be thinking about this as a top laner as well. If you're a top laner that actually wants to join team fights, maybe especially later into the game, you should be thinking, OK, how can I shove my wave to make sure I lose as little as possible? get a good reset and I can actually move with my team to help them on this play. Or even if you're a split pushing top, maybe you could say, OK, what I want to primarily do is while my team is doing the dragon or the Baron, I want to be splitting on the side of the map. So if I know that I need to be setting up a minute in advance to make sure that I'm actually pressuring the enemy team to make a decision between me or the objective when that objective comes. If the dragon's spawning right now and you're barely moving up uh, on your side lane and you have no actual tower to pressure, you're not actually going to be using a lot with that tempo and it's not going to be helping your team. So even if you may not be actually going to the fight, understanding how tempo is affecting the entire map state is incredibly important. So hopping into this next example, I want to show that, yes, while tempo is very good, if you're taking skirmishes or fights around neutral objectives or something similar like this, it doesn't necessarily mean that you always need to be up tempo on your opponent, especially if you can elongate the lane and there's nothing really to worry about. And that means that you can actually get some advantage from just sticking around and getting a better base later on. 
So as we play out this example, I'm playing Talia against Kiana. I built up a little bit of an HP advantage. Nautilus lands a great hook, uh, which nets us a kill. And actually I decide in here like, yes, Kiana is going to uh, TP back into the lane, but I actually have a freeze, which means I can kind of just hold this. And then once Kiana comes back and tries to shove the wave, I can get a base later on uh, and actually be a little bit up um, on a little bit more gold on that base. And that's kind of what I decided to do. I was initially thinking maybe we could go for a regank, but it doesn't seem like it's op an option since Nautilus is leaving and uh, Viego is going to topside. So all good. I'll let uh, Kiana shove the wave in. This was my plan all along. But something I will note here is that since Kiana did just come off that base, she's going to have tempo. She's going to shove this wave and then she has the move. This is what the tempo from her being base and TP's nets her. So something that I'm going to definitely have to keep in mind as I... Um, I'm going here. So here I start throwing danger pings. I definitely could be better about this. My pings were not great here in the scenario, but communicating that the enemy team has the move here is what's very important. So you'll notice that I initially start the base here, but then I noticed that, well, our top laner is actually in base. We just barely got the kill top and it's just going to take a second here. And then Kiana and Nidalee both have the first setup on these grubs. So I decide, you know what? I don't think it's going to be easy to fight this, even if I base and TB back. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay on the map, elongating. So I'm very down tempo here, but I know Kiana is probably just going to help out her jungler on the grubs, which means I get an extra wave and I am going to actively ping this Viego that I don't want to take this play because Kiana is up tempo. So there's no point in trying to do it. I think we're too late to the play anyways. Whether or not you think that this was a good decision, you can kind of debate. The point I want to illustrate here is that tempo only gets you as much as you can use with it. So in this situation, Kiana is able to TP back. She has tempo, so she helps her jungler and they're able to get two of the grubs. In this situation, I saw that, you know, probably tempo was not going to get me that much if I used it right in that scenario. So instead, I'm going to elongate the lane. And this means that when I come back, I'm going to be even stronger and I'm going to be definitely up tempo and stronger than the Kiana at this point. And that means I can maybe use that timer to go and, and make a bot play or something like that or set up for the dragon or, or whatever it is. It's going to be some future play that I use my tempo on. I figured that, you know what, in this situation, it doesn't make sense for me to try and get a reset and try to fight the grubs. So better, I just extend it, get a little bit more strong, and then I'll come back even stronger and I can make a different play. So if we go back to the beginning of this play, I said that maybe it's debatable that if I read, made the right decision. Personally, I think I did make a mistake here. I think that after the, getting this kill on Kiana, I could have realized like, okay, this is actually a great time for me to base. It's at 4.15 mark. The wave is going to be frozen, which means when I TP back, I should be fine to collect it and actually have the items to uh, kind of contest the Kiana on that push. And not only that, but it is also going to set me up really well to be able to help this Viego on the grubs. And knowing that Kiana is going to get that base and be able to be up tempo for the grubs, I could have anticipated that, gotten that reset right here. So I would I would instantly reset uh, without clearing any of the minions and then TP back, which means I'm going to actually match tempo on Kiana. And then we can take this fight with the Viego that's obviously strong and wants to fight. I think that would have been a better decision. And that only comes about if I understand how tempo actually plays a role and how Kiana was able to make a play, even though she was the one that died. I hope that the explanation and the examples really help showcase what tempo really is all about and that it can help you spot it in your own game so you can better understand how you can use tempo to constantly build advantages throughout those games. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. So make sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Or I stream after every upload on Saturdays as well as Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to swing by either my YouTube channel or my Twitch linked in the description, I can definitely answer any of the questions that you have there. Past that, you can join my Discord to talk with the community about anything league related. Or if you want to get information on coaching, all of that will be in my Discord. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you making it all the way to the end of the video and I'll catch you in the next one.